Y'all, we did it. We got through all the A's. Every single artist who has an A in the title, and then the subsequent album that I decided to review from that artist, has been reviewed. We did it. Wow, I didn't think I would get this far. And I got like six subscribers. Wow, that's, that's awesome. I feel so good right now. Today we are going to be jumping into the bees, and and with this 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 video, uh, we'll be talking about um, the album "All This Bad Blood" by Bastille. I'm going to skip the thing about telling you to go look in the description because you you know the drill. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know the drill. If you're interested in the channel, just just read the description. <sighs> All This Bad Blood is actually the deluxe version of the debut Bastille album called Bad Blood. You may be wondering, who is Bastille? Well, you shouldn't be wa you shouldn't be wondering that if you're watching this video today because they've recent they just recently got popular again because of the song Happier, which is Marshmallow featuring Bastille. Bastille sings the song, Marshmallow did the music. Very, very popular song. Um, they actually rose to fame and popularity with the song Pompeii. And that was a long time ago. A few years ago. But it was a really, really big hit song. The music video has hundreds of millions of views. And it really put them on the alternative pop map. Put them in the front and center attention of alternative pop bands. Bastille stands out for their lead singer's hypnotic, beautiful voice. Actually, I don't know if I should say that because I, I, this is the part where I try to be unbiased about it and try to be like very, very objective. So I'm not going to say my subjective thoughts. But it's, it's very distinguishable from his voice, from the poetic lyrics, the oohs and ahs, the vocal harmonies, and, and their pop rock sound, I guess. Where they, yeah... It's, they sound mainstream enough to be played on pop radio, but they sound alternative enough to be better <laughs> to be better than most pop artists. So that's 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 Bastille. Now, um, unlike other videos I've done before, this one this album is ridiculously long. It's like 22 songs. It's it's basically the length of two albums smashed together. And, and instead of just describing the album to you, trying to like do all that, I, I really just want to tell you why I love it. There, I said it. I said I love this album. But I'm going to try to explain why, sort of. All This Bad Blood is utterly amazing. I think it is the closest thing you can get to perfection without being perfection. The closest score you can get to a perfect score that isn't a perfect score. That's what I would describe all this bad blood. Because literally, every single... I would literally say every single song on this album is great or amazing, and there's so many of them. The quality, the consistency of this record is unbelievable. But there's two songs which I don't love. And for that reason, I can't, I'm not comfortable giving it a perfect score. But this is literally, like, this is my favorite alternative album ever, of all time. The two songs on this album that I'm not 100% on board with are the songs Bad Blood and Of The Night. Bad Blood just has kind of not very good lyrics. And the music! It just kind of drags, and it's kind of awkward. It honestly just doesn't sound very good. Like, I know I'm I'm in the minority of people who don't like that song, but I really just don't care for it. It just just doesn't sound good. It, doesn't, it just really pales in comparison to all the other songs on the album. And then the other song that I don't really care for is Of The Night. It's just a party song. It's a very well-done party song. Party love song. But I don't love it because it's just kind of... It's... The lyrics are pretty shallow, and it's it's a pretty shallow song overall. Not a lot of depth compared to the rest of the album. Besides these two songs, I think this is literally like 
one of the best albums ever made of all time. The music on this album is perfect. It's either awesome, it's either very fast and upbeat, very slow, a lot of it is mid-tempo, and the, the singing on this record is perfect. It fits perfectly with the music, perfectly with the lyrics. Dan Smith, I think that's his name, is a fantastic singer. Really, really good. Heard he's great live. Cannot wait to see Bastille live. I haven't done that yet. That's on my bucket list. And then um, the lyrics on this album. Every, almost every single song in this album tells its own story. The lyrics are very poetic, they're very beautiful, and they all tell stories. And with with these storytell beautiful storytelling lyrics, poetic lyrics, I just it you can come back to it over and over again and get more out of it each time and it's just it's it's honestly just amazing. Doing highlights for this thing is is kind of hard, but not too hard. Because literally every song on this album is a highlight. Literally every song on this album is a highlight. All of them. Just off the bat, just starting right off the bat, Pompeii. It's a great song. I've never found I've never found anybody who's heard the song Pompeii and said, Wow, that's a dumb song, or I don't like Pompeii. It's like it's a great, it's super upbeat, it's insanely fun, it's in very it's creative also, and the lyrics are good, the music is good, the singing is good, it's just a good song. It's a good song. And that can be said of like all the songs in this album. They're not as fun, most of the songs are not as fun and upbeat as Pompeii, but they're all basically as good, if not better. Just gonna bounce some highlights off you, uh, off, off you person watching this video. We have songs like Daniel in the Den. Daniel in the Den is heavily inspired by the biblical story. And the lyrics are about, it's from the perspective of like Daniel or, or spectating Daniel and saying, Well, you thought the lions were bad. Well, they tried to kill my brothers. And for every king that died, they would crown another. It's harder than you think telling dreams from one another. You thought the lions were bad. Well, they tried to kill my brothers. Felled in the night by the ones you think you loved. They will come for you. And it's just... Ugh! Those lyrics are so good. If you don't know the biblical story of Daniel, then you might not like it as much. But I, I do know the story, and so good. And the singing and the music, so good. Another great song, The Draw. The Draw is, a much, is one of the slowest, most somber songs in the album. And it's about someone making a decision. They're torn between the familiar and the great unknown, trusting their friends, or maybe a voice inside of the, the guy's head, a voice inside of Dan Smith's head saying, should I trust my friends? Should I leave my friends? Blah, 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 blah. And it's, I shouldn't have said blah, blah, blah. It's a beautiful, amazing, perfect, amazing song. Great song. Another great song in this thing is Sleep Song. This is a like a haunting song about it's it's there's a little bit of ambiguity and that's another cool thing about this these songs is you can interpret them in different ways they're all very poetic and they all basically have their own narrative and story but you don't exactly know where it goes so this song i i, I guess it can be interpreted different ways but it seems to be from the perspective that dan smith is singing and writing the lyrics from the perspective of a woman who doesn't want to be alone and it's just kind of who's scared of ending up alone, of dying alone. And she gets kind of desperate and it's it's just Oh man. The 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 power of that song. Another great song, uh, Laughter Lines. This is honestly like people don't know how to make love songs. That's what I think. I think most people don't right know how to make a good love song. This is an amazing love song. The music is so original and creative. The lyrics are so beautiful. And like, and romantic, and but in a good way, in a in a cool way. So like, it's a, it's a great song. And then you have the most haunting, really upsetting song on here, which is uh, an upsetting song with the lyrics. The the only explicit song in the album. It's called uh, "What Would You Do," and it's from the perspective of. I, actually, actually, I'm not going to tell you what it's about. It's a, it's, it's very mature content, and it's, it's a very serious song, and it's really, really good. It could make you cry. 
if you're in the mood, if you're in an emotionally vulnerable state when listening to the song. Some other great songs on this thing, um, Durban Skies. And I would say that the best parts of this album are in the second half. So there's Bad Blood, which is disc one, and then disc two is, um, disc two is, is, I would say, the better songs. But Durban Skies, beautiful, amazing poetic lyrics, beautiful singing, just amazing singing throughout the whole album, and great, great music. Great music, great singing, great lyrics. Another great song, uh, Things We Lost in the Fire. Once more, poetic lyrics, this one has sort of a love aspect to it, and it's, it's kind of like the aftermath of Pompeii. Like, literally, like, the aftermath of everything you know burning down, your home burning down, everything you love being destroyed. It kind of has that feel to it. I think that's what they're going for in the lyrics. Another great song, A Poet. Poet is a love song, a but it's super duper poetic and super duper good, and it's just a good love song, believe it or not. How do they do that? How does Bastille do that? It's a great, it's a really, really good song. Really, really good song. I could go on and on and on and on about why every single song in this album is great, but I don't want to. I don't want to do that because listen to it for yourself. If, and this is really bizarre to me, is how low rated Bad Blood is. I literally can't understand why people hate it so much, unless they just really dislike the title track, because I can understand disliking the title track because it's not very good. But the album Bad Blood just has really bad critic ratings and pretty bad user ratings as well. So I don't really know where that comes from. I tried to understand it, but I don't, I don't know why people don't really like it or don't think it's amazing so maybe it's just not for everybody but um this album all this bad blood i'm giving it a 4.75 out of 5 yep this album is is almost too good it's it's almost too good i think i already mentioned this is my third favorite album of all time it's now, okay, one reason I made, one reason behind why I like this album so much, it probably has something to do with nostalgia, but, I, I mean, because I listened to this album a very long time ago, I think in, like, seventh grade, and I listened to it over and over and over again, I thought it was awesome, and it just got more and more awesome, and it's just stayed, either stayed more, stayed as awesome as it is, or gotten more awesome, and it's great. And it's, it's honestly just awesome. You might love this album. You might hate this album. Let, let me know what you think, person watching this video. What do you think of Bastille? What do you, what do you think, man? Well, what's your all-time favorite album? I would like to know. Thanks for watching.